Hello, welcome. It's Friday Crafting Playdate time. This is Robin Armbrecht with Really Robin Stamps. You are joining me maybe live or you are catching this on the replay, but either way, I'm so glad that you are taking the time to learn something new about um, stamping today. And um, I'm just really excited. I have a lot of um, projects to show you today. I have two things that we're going to make in particular and they both have to do with pattern paper. So we are gonna get out our pretty colors and start to play today. All right, so let's get started. How is everyone doing today? Hopefully well. All right, let me find you. So I can see your comments. All right, hi Lynn, hi Paula. Look at these pretty colors we're gonna use today. So excited. All right, again, thank you for joining me. So today I have um, a very, very simple, quick card template to show you using patterned paper. And then I have a fun card album that I think you will absolutely love. So we have two, two things we're going to do today. Um, before I forget, celebration ends at the end of February. So there's only nine days left to take advantage of um, celebration. So we don't want to miss out on that free stuff. And um, as I did in January, in the month of February, if you place a $50 order with me online and you use the hostess code, um, you get to have a free um, card class for me. So I'll get a, a three projects and a kit to you and you can put those together with me on um, a little private video. So I'm doing that again. So you've got nine days to take advantage of that. Hi, Elaine. So good to have you with me. All right, so this is a, a very easy, easy, simple, simple card template, all right? Um, this is a way that you can take your lovely designer series paper and you can um, chop it up and use it and make very quick, beautiful cards because the designer series paper is going to do all the work for you, okay? So this is kind of going to be like a gatefold card, but what I really love is that you can get three cards from one piece of paper. All right, so here's how this is going to work. We are going to um, first score this before we cut it. So we're going to score it at three and a half and eight and three fourths. And I will definitely have a um, PDF template, uh, card template pattern for you later on that you can um, access on my blog at reallyrobinstamps.com. All right, so we scored this at three and a half and eight and three fourths. And now I'm gonna turn it so that my score lines are going this way and I'm going to cut it into three even pieces, which is four inches. So one four inch strip, and then two more. So these are exactly the same size, four inches by 12 inches, like that, and they're all scored. So what you do, very simply, let me grab my bone folder here, is you fold these in like that. And then basically what you have is a gatefold card, but it overlaps, okay? So any kind of what I call a gatefold is something that closes in the middle of your card. Um, and this one overlaps by about an inch and a half, all right? So this is a really easy way to quickly make three cards from one of the sheets of your beautiful designer series paper. All right, so again, you've got two sides to choose from. All right, so we'll do 
We'll do two on this side and two on this side, just so you can see. This this card template reminds me of when I um, was younger as a child. I had a lot of stationery um, all the time. I loved to write letters, and so there was always those kind of notes that folded like that, and then you had a sticker to hold them together. Those were always my favorite um, kind of little note cards. All right, so this paper that I'm using today is from the Flower and Fields um, pack of Designer Series paper, and it's one of the items that you can get free during celebration. So I am using it up because it's gonna be gone. All right, so the other pieces that you need to complete this card, you need something for the center, and then you need a quarter sheet to go on the back. So this is just a regular piece of um, cardstock that coordinates that is cut at four and a quarter by five and a half. So you get four of those per sheet of cardstock. And then this piece for the inside is three and three fourths by five. So let's put these together. We'll do all the centers first. So this gives you a nice place to put your inside greeting. So again, this white piece is three and three fourths by five. And you could put a colored, um, colored piece of cardstock in there. It doesn't have to be white. Okay. So there are the insides. Now let's go ahead and attach the cards to the back. I'm telling you, this is so simple. It's a great way to, um, if you've got kind of a stash of paper that you kind of wanna use so you can justify buying more. <laughs> if you're like me, um, this, is, this is my favorite thing to buy is this beautiful double-sided paper. I just, always adds a, just a really nice pop, you know, to your to your cars or your projects or whatever you're making. So I feel like every pack I need to have. So this is a great way to, um, to use it up and then make really quick cards that are just really very sweet. All right, so we put those all on their backs like that. So basically, your card is done. All you have to do is choose, you know, any stamp set that goes with your, um, the paper you designed, and it doesn't even have to have really images in it. You can just pick a greeting stamp set, and then you need to pick a shape to put on here to just, you know, to um, be a focal point and then also overlap the flaps, okay? So I'm gonna do one little, um, thing. I'm going to just do a little tearing because I love this bright little white edge that pops out on this paper. So I'm going to just tear. And when you tear, you want to tear towards, towards you and use your thumbs to control the paper. If you just keep them really close together like that, then you'll have complete control of the paper and you won't like accidentally rip it. Isn't that pretty? It just adds a little, you know, little added um, bit of texture to a very simple card. Anybody else going crazy with this snow in the winter and the cold like I am? I'm just, I mean, it's, giving me a good opportunity to um, get some things done around the house, but boy, am I ready to get outside. All right, so what I decided to do for my card, again, you can pick any shape to close these up, circle, rectangle, square, anything, any image, you know, whatever you have is what you're gonna use. So I cut three of these scalloped rectangles um, to put on my cards, and then I just cut a piece of 
basic white that would fit inside here. And that's where my greeting is gonna go. So I'm gonna quickly put those together for you. Let's move those out of the way. I decided I really wanted to use this um, pretty perennial stamp set to put these together because I love how it coordinates with this paper. So let me bring in the stamps. And we need a black ink pad as well. All right, so I'm gonna put happy on all of these cards. Like that. And then I'm going to take some of the greetings that go with the happy. I want to stamp that in just jade because that's one of the colors. So we've got you make me happy. Sending lots of happy and happy birthday. Okay. Let's move the black ink pad so I don't drop my cards in it. I think there's a little magnetic field around the black ink pad because I swear <laughs> if it's sitting out your everything is drawn to it. Your fingers, your papers, any your made card that you just finished goes right into that pad if it's left out. So now I'm just going to put these focal points on these rectangles. I'm telling you, this is a nice, easy um, template. You can just make a bunch of bunch of cards at once. All right, so let's go ahead and add these to the cards, and then we'll just give them a little bit of embellishment. So I made these to all open this way, but of course, depending on your focal point, they can totally open this way as well. So I'm going to put um, adhesive on just half, center it in the middle of the card there, and attach it. Of course, you could pop it up too. Oops. Yikes, made a little mess. There we go. Okay, and one more. Okay, so now we've got our three cards and all that they really need is just one little pop of embellishment. So I'm going to bring out two of the flowers from the Pretty Perennial stamp set. And we're going to bring out the flowers that are in the paper. Oh geez, I, now I, I definitely have something on my fingers. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So I'm going to stamp a bumblebee flower and then a flirty flamingo flower. I did. I made this huge smudge here. Okay, one of the flowers is going to have to go there, right? You can always fix it. Okay, let me just wipe my fingers off. It's crafting, guys. You know, it's not perfect. It's art. All right, so um, I am not going to do this right now, but this has the little... Um, dies that go with the pretty perennials. So I cut those out already just to save a little bit of time. And so all we have to do is pop those up on our cards and add a little embellishment. Three and three. Okay, so let's grab our dimensionals. I love this big sheet of dimensionals. The um, paper pumpkin kits are now coming with this bigger sheet of dimensionals. So this is the size of the regular dimensionals. Um, and then in the paper pumpkin kits, you get one of these um, every month. So I'm like, oh, I'm flush with dimensionals right now. 
All right, I'm gonna take the backs off. All of these cute little flowers. All right, let's start with my, my little mistake there. We're just gonna put him right there. And then we'll add the yellow one there. Now this hat kind of has a bigger space over here, so I'll put that one there. And then I think I'll do the same thing on this one. Like that. And then let's put some of these matte black um, dots on here. Okay, so we're going to put a small one on the small flower and a larger dot on the large flower. Okay, yeah, Elaine, yeah, you, everybody smudges. There's just, there's just no way you can get away with um, doing anything crafty without making a little bit of a mess, but... Thankfully, there's always two sides of the paper, and there's always a way to kind of uh, just create a, an embellishment opportunity, right? So here's our quick little overlapping gatefold cards. Super, super easy. Super quick. You can literally go to your um, little craft stash and whip out some of these. Um, in fact, so right before, I always think I have more time than I do, um, right before I started to go live a, a few minutes before, I'm like, oh, I want to make just a few more samples. And so I quick pulled out um, three sheets of designer series paper. I was able to score them and cut them all. Uh, I, actually, I scored them separately and then I layered them together. I cut them all into the four inch strips all at the same time um, and then cut up a bunch of the bases and the insides and literally you could create lots and lots of cards. So these aren't done yet. These are with the pretty perennial um, paper, not pretty perennial, the peony paper. And then this one was with the ornate garden paper and I just need to put some kind of focal point on those and then those will be done. But I did get a chance to finish these and I used the, um, what is this paper called? This paper is called World of Good Specialty Paper. Um, it's got a little bit of a gold um, foiling in it. And so I just quick made these and this is a great way to see that not, you know, you can open in the flaps this way or you can do the flaps, you know, vertically or horizontally. All right. So that's your assignment today is to get out a sheet of designer series paper and make three cards and get those in the mail because you know what, if you are a card maker, the world needs you, right? We've got lots of paper in our stash and the world needs that. You need to send that out into the world and make somebody's day. Okay, that was my quick, 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 quick cards. Now we're gonna do something that I'm super excited about as well. And we're going to create a mini album that is the size of a card. So I'm calling it a card album. And we're gonna use just one sheet of designer series paper, and we're gonna use one sheet of eight and a half by 11 neutral. I'm using basic white, all right? So let me just give you a peek at what, what this is gonna look like. So here is um, the size of the finished card album. And what I love, love, love about this project is that it fits in an envelope, it's completely mailable, um, most likely, unless you stuff it, you don't even have to put more than a regular stamp on it. Okay, so it's really, really mailable, which that's super important to me. So I kind of, with that in mind, was thinking about kind of efficiently using two pieces of paper and creating this album. So let me just show you, give you a sneak peek here so you can see where we're headed. Maybe if I can get the belly band off. <laughs> All right. 
So this one opens like this. Oh. All right, let me show you how this works. All right, I'm gonna put the white aside for a second. I'm gonna bring back my score tool. If you have a score tool like this, you can use that. If you don't, um, you can use the scoring blade on your paper cutter. Either one works just perfectly. Okay. All right, so here's how you do this. You're gonna love this because it's very similar to, um, it has a similar fold to the cards we just used. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're going to score evenly at four inches and eight inches. And this, again, gives you the four inch by 12 inch strips or sections, okay? We're not gonna cut on these like we did for the cards. We're just scoring at four inches and eight inches, all right? And then you're gonna turn one turn and along the other side, you're gonna score at three and a half by eight and three fourths. Sound familiar? That was the same um, scoring dimension that we used for the cards we just made. So three and a half, eight and three fourths. All right, and so what this gives you And it won't be easy to see until I get this folded, but what it gives you is nine boxes or sections that we're going to cut and fold to create pockets. And it's gonna create four pockets. So what I found is easiest is if um, you kind of orient yourself to the paper, I'm just double checking, um, and you put the, the um, lines that you scored that are four at four and eight, those are going to be vertical to you and then mark the top okay so that will be our top let me show you one that i drew on so you can kind of see where we're headed here i tr trust me this is really easy um you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine that's how i labeled the sections or the rectangles in this project okay anywhere that there's a dotted line that just means that's where you're going to cut and then the arrows show where these pieces fold, okay? So I am going to set that there and hopefully we can see both pieces at the same time. Now the first thing that you have to do is fold on these lines. And it's really important to um, kind of go slowly so that you make sure they are the edges are meeting exactly and they don't you know they don't overlap the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go both ways when we when we um, fold on that score line and this is going to make the album very easy to manipulate so we're going to do one at a time now we'll do this one like that and then we're going to fold it back to make it extra malleable. All right, now we're gonna do, this is the three and a half inch line. And then we're gonna do the bottom. You're gonna have to replay this video and um, create one with me. And um, I would love to see a picture of it because I've made now, I think five or six of these and every single one is so pretty with the designer series paper. Um, and it just looks, they're just each unique. So like, I wanna see all the different papers. <laughs> all right, so now we have scored at four inches and eight inches. We turned it, we scored it at three and a half and eight and a quarter. Then we marked the top. And really, I'm calling this the top just to orient ourselves to um, how the boxes are to put it together. But you could really, you know, um, position this um, pocket card album. You could really position it in any position. All right. Um, and the reason you kind of have to know is because this is three and a half. 
but this is three and a quarter. So they look the same, but they're not exactly the same. You, you want to know which one is the three and a half. That's why I marked the top. All right, so now we're going to go section by section. We're going to start with number nine down here, which is a diagonal cut on this box. So this is the only thing you need a ruler and a pencil for. You can actually eyeball it, but... All right, so I just drew a line from the inside corner to the outside corner, and then I'm gonna use my scissors and cut on that line, okay? So these are gonna fold like that. So you can see on my pattern, that arrow is saying that, that arrow is saying that, okay? All right, so now we're gonna move up and we're going, actually, let's move over. We're gonna go in between seven and eight here, and we're just gonna cut on this score line. You could use your paper cutter to do this cutting, but it's really easy with scissors and um, you don't really need to do that. All right, then we're gonna look at this section here, which is number one, and you can see that you have to cut on both of those lines and you're essentially just cutting this whole thing out. Okay, but we're save that because we're gonna use that um, to hold our card together. So now we're gonna go to this square here and we're gonna cut on the score line between three and six. Okay, so you can kind of see here how we did this. We cut here, we cut here, we cut here, and we cut that one out. Super easy, right? So, this is how the pockets, that's gonna fold over and make a pocket. These are gonna make pockets. This is gonna fold up here and make a pocket and then you end up having a cross here like that. And you've got four pockets. Isn't that cool? I love this. All right, so before we start putting the pockets together, we're gonna just do a little extra trimming that will allow the, um, It'll allow the pockets and the whole album to close. It'll just give it a little space. So you, we cut on those score lines, right? But there's like a little ridge left on the score line, which is just like a little sliver. So in where you made these cuts, you're gonna just take some scissors and just cut off a tiny little sliver on each side. And that's gonna just give it a little space on those flaps and make it easier to close. So we'll do that one. And then we'll go to this corner you can see all the all the actions in the corners here right now that's how the pockets get made so this isn't even really um it's not even quite a six it's just a tiny tiny little sliver piece that i'm just trimming off it's like the ridge from the score the scoring line just kind of cut that off so we'll do that one other side of the score line over there. Perfect. Okay, so you can see it just put a little space in there. You don't have to do this one because these don't, they don't um, fold the same way. All right, so now that we've done that, we're ready to glue it together. I found that the liquid glue is the best way to um, attach these. And you, but if you don't like liquid glue, of course you could use any other adhesive that you wanted. But if you go ahead and use um, like tear tape, you're gonna have to remember that the inserts um, with the dimensions that I give you will have to be smaller because you'll have a wider um, adhesive edge. So your pocket will just end up being a little bit smaller. So let's do the diagonal pockets first. So when you, Fold that up, just make sure that your edges exactly meet. That way you won't have any overlap that shows on the outside of the card. All right, so we'll fold those two. And what I forgot to say, I guess, is that um, 
when you pick your piece of designer series paper or your patterned paper, and, and most of the time this is accurate, but you really want a piece that has two sides that coordinate together. And you can see why, because um, you want to, on, on the inside of this beautiful little album, you're gonna see both of the papers. So you want them to coordinate or at least go together. Um, and you do wanna keep in mind directionality a little bit. So for example, um, this piece of designer series paper has all the flowers going in a definite vertical pattern. So you could totally still use this. This could be the inside of your um, album and you would just kind of orient them, you know, in the direction that you're making the album. And then everything that folded in would be this cute little um, yellow polka dot, all right? But if, let's say you wanted this to be the outside of your album, um, you would have to just kind of keep in mind that as you're folding it, right, to close it, you would want to orient the paper such that the flowers maybe would be going in the right direction. And you can figure this out when you pull out whatever paper you're gonna use. Just keep that in mind. All right, so we've done the two diagonal pockets. Now we're gonna do this pocket, but before we pull that up, I'm just gonna take a um, my two and a quarter circle punch, and I'm gonna punch just about like a quarter of the circle out just to create a nice little edge for the pocket. And then we put adhesive on the outside edges and fold that up. So here's where you can see, because I trimmed that, so this piece doesn't like overlap the score line of the middle piece, so it's gonna make it easier when you fold it, if that makes sense, when you put it all together. All right, the last pocket is here. It's gonna go like this, and I am going to just do a little tearing. If you don't wanna tear, just fold that flap over. Um, you can just fold it over or you could just cut it off just so that you can see a little bit of that paper underneath and you get that contrast. So this pocket needs glue on those two edges. I'll take this off. All right, so now we've got four pockets. Pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna let this dry and I'm gonna show you how to cut the inserts. I love this because you basically use the whole entire sheet of your neutral color. So here's how you do this. Again, as always, I have a PDF that's gonna go up on my blog this afternoon. So you'll have um, something you can download um, so you can make this and have all the directions and pictures. So we're gonna cut off a strip that's one and an eighth inch by eight and a half. So put my paper in horizontally here. This is gonna be the belly band to close the card. Then we're gonna measure at two and three fourths. And I'm gonna cut at three and a half. And again, at three and a half. And these are gonna be the little cards or picture holders that are gonna go in, the, in these pockets right here, these smaller pockets. All right, then I'm gonna take this, this piece, so this little piece is extra. Then I'm gonna take this piece and turn it at four and a half. And from that piece, I'm gonna cut twice, four and a half by three and a quarter, four and a half by three and a quarter. And these are going to be the inserts for these pockets. And then with the last piece, you just have this tiny little strip that you can save or throw away and then you're going to cut the middle piece here and that is four and three fourths by three and a half like that so really this is all that's left over from that piece of white and you can use these little pieces to help decorate or put it back into your stash all right let's bring this back in and i'll show you so these go here, like that. Into this pocket, and then this one, I'm actually gonna glue down. Oops. 
in the middle. So just let your imagination, um, you know, kind of run with this project because think of all the different things you could do. I feel like this would be a great project, um, obviously with pictures, and I'm going to show you how it looks with pictures. Um, this would be a great card for um, a group of people to give somebody, maybe a coworker or, you know, a relative like grandma on a, a birthday or something where you've got, you know, it's interactive because there's pockets and um, you've got lots of space for people to write things as well. Um, so let's just decorate this as a birthday card. All right. And we're going to save the belly band. We'll close that in a minute. So I'm going to bring in two birthday stamp sets. This one is a celebration set that you can get. And then this one is in the January to June um, mini catalog. And I'm going to bring in the colors that coordinate with this paper, which is um, it's Calypso Coral. And I'm going to use also Bumblebee. So let me set those aside there. Boy, my station is like, whoo, a mess. Okay. So I'm going to just take all the pieces that I can because I love, this is just such a fun set. It's got all these cute little greetings. So we're just going to use almost every single one and just decorate this as a birthday kind of card album. So down here, let's take this guy out and we're going to do the news flash. All right, I love this. News flash, birthdays found to be good for your health. Studies show that people who have more birthdays live the longest. So we're gonna just put that there and then we'll take the happy birthday that comes in that and let's stamp that twice. So I'm just kind of making a little border here, just like that. So that one's gonna go in there and then let's take the balloon and we'll put just a couple little balloons on that piece and then on this piece I love this big word bubble And let's see. We'll put this greeting here. If things really do get better with age, then you're approaching perfection. I love that. So that's going to go there. And then let's bring this guy out and let's use some of these cute little candles. Let's see. I'm going to go every other one with these colors here to make it interesting. Like that, do you see how this is going together? And then for this pocket, this because that little piece sticks out, it's a great place to put like a longer greeting along that edge. So, so what if you're a year older? You're fabulous. And that's going to peek out. And then you could put like a message in there. So let's just go ahead and stamp happy birthday. And then you could write your greeting there. Okay, I'm going to take my bumblebee and calypso coral and just hit those balloons. coordinate and then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of color this here and that way everything will coordinate all right so now you've got a birthday card and you could just add pictures to this or 
extra messages or whatever you want. Pretty cool. So let's finish it off and we'll make the belly band. So that was that one and a half by eight inch, eight and a half inch strip. So when you get ready to close this together, all you have to do is kind of make sure everything's aligned. You can re use your bone folder again. And it doesn't matter. I like to fold um, the larger ones in first and then kind of have that fun flap. And again, because we, we scored this the same as the cards I made in the beginning, this is the same flap, all right? So you could go ahead and just put, you know, a, one of the, you know, shape focal points on there. You don't have to do a belly band, but I just thought I'd do something different. And it really doesn't matter which way the flaps go. Um, I just kind of like to think of the top flap being a little bit longer, so that's how I'm gonna do it. And then to create the belly band, you just take your piece of paper and wrap it around like that. You don't have to wrap it really tightly, just make sure it's overlapping about an eighth of an inch. Okay, add your glue. Gonna let that just sit for a minute. Let's put a block on it to hold it down. So what we're gonna do with this piece that was left over then, um, we are going to cut out a, um, a section of this using the same circle punch, and then we'll create a focal point. So I'm gonna go here, because I'm gonna stamp on it. And then if you want to, you can use what's left over and cut a strip to go on your belly band. It depends on the paper you choose, whether you'll be able to stamp on the designer series paper or not, but I'm just trying to keep this project super easy. So you could, again, you could cut your circle just like this and stamp on it like that. Um, this is not too dark, but I, the black isn't going to show up really great. I already tried it. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to stamp on. And then I'm just going to cut another little piece to lay on there. So I'm going to use just a one-inch strip from this leftover um, corner, that section one that we cut out. Okay. Give it a little bit of dimension. Okay, I'm going to use the You Are Amazing from that, from the um, set that's called You Are Amazing. This is fastly becoming one of my favorite go-to stamp sets. And I'm going to put that on there. And then we're going to pop it up and call it done. All right, what do you guys think about this? All right, so there we've got our little card album. Um, could put a little ribbon on here. I love, love, love this gingham ribbon and this bumblebee happens to match. So we're gonna put a little bit of ribbon on here just to make it special. Just going to make a little knot. Oops, I don't think that came off. There we go. There. Who wouldn't want to receive that cute little card? All right, let me show you what you can do um, with some other papers and what it looks like with pictures. And then I just encourage you, um, if you try making one of these, I would love to see a picture of it. All right, so there's that one.
So let me show you this one. This is also with the same. This is the Ice Cream Corner Designer Series paper. Um, I did this one. And um, this was interesting. I'm glad I tried this. I Instead of using a the white, the basic white, I put... Um, I used Purple Posy to put that in there and it totally works, but when it came time to um, put the belly band on, the piece that I had cut that was one and a half by eight and a half, um, it, it wouldn't overlap. So even just adding um, the extra little bit of thickness from transitioning from to basic white to the purple posy cardstock that just made it really thick so you'll just have to keep that in mind if you're going to add um, multiple pictures or another layer you'll probably have to make the belly band out of another piece of paper so what's really cool this one i didn't get done decorating yet but i'm going to put the ice cream cones in there and um if you didn't want to put pictures or a message inside these little pockets they both fit gift cards really really easily so you could get the little Starbucks card and ice cream card and then put your message and then maybe a, a couple pictures in there and you've got a great little birthday gift for somebody so I will finish that one and post that so this is also for a birthday this is using the the peony paper and then I used the the stitched flowers that we worked on last week. I think that's just beautiful. So again, this one's for birthday, but if you think kind of think outside the box, you can think, okay, what other um what else could I do with this? And so, here's one with pictures. So this is with the true love um patterned paper. And this one, um, I decided I, well, my um, brother-in-law and sister-in-law were celebrating their 15th wedding anniversary. And so I made this for them to send. And her wedding colors were red. So I went ahead and added the red to the black and white. And instead of putting this on a piece of paper, I just put a loose photo in there. Um, you could write on here, you could put another picture on the back. And then I put the message in here where it was kind of hidden. That way, if, um, you know, if when they got this, if they wanted to show it around, you know, but not have my message out there, then it's kind of hidden and tucked away. Isn't that fun? Now these pictures are all three by four. And so I used my Canon selfie printer um, and an app on my phone and I was able to just um, pick the layout where you could do two pictures on one four by six. Um, there's lots of lots of ways to do that but even though that picture I mean you kind of think that those are different sizes but they're not they're all three by four. All right let me show you another one with pictures. This is using the um, Fine Art Gallery Designer Series paper. And so you can see this was a, one of those patterns that um, is directional. So let me just show you the back first. So um, the, the, the flowers have kind of a definite pattern. I used them upside down on the back so that when I closed the card, they would be going the right way. But my um, friend Bethany's birthday was yesterday, so this is gonna be late but I hope that'll hope she'll forgive me <laughs> anyway I just stuck the pictures in the same way like that again you could put a little tuck a gift card in there as well um, I put the message in here like that all right what do you think what do you think this one doesn't have pictures or in it, but I, I um, as usual, had to make several. And so this little one with the berries, I need to decorate still. But that one will be ready to go soon. All right, so what did we accomplish today? A lot, I feel like we did a lot today. 
So we have a pattern for making quick, quick cards using designer series paper. Getting three cards from one sheet of designer series paper. And then we also used one sheet and similar folds to create this four pocket mini album. So I thank you so much for watching today and I hope that you are inspired to try some of this. Again, get your pattern paper out and, and use it because um, you know what? They're going to make more, so you might as well use it. Um, again, on reallyrobinstamps.com this afternoon, you'll find the pictures and the directions. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.